Hello, it's Dr. Tammy Donatter. Today in our mini lecture, we will be discussing radial head and neck fractures. We will also discuss how to identify occult fractures of the elbow. We will talk a little bit about fatigue and insufficiency fractures, and we will end on non-union fractures and pseudoarthrosis. Let's get started. Here is our next radiograph. What do we see? So hopefully you recognize that we see a joint effusion. We do not see a fracture. A joint effusion of the elbow can be a secondary sign of an, of an occult fracture. And this uh, elbow should be treated as there's an occult fracture. This next radiograph also shows a joint effusion. So this nicely shows, this lateral radiograph of the elbow shows a positive fat pad sign. We see an elevation of the anterior fat pad. Hopefully all of you can see a little area of decreased density or darkness anterior to the distal humerus. That is the anterior fat pad that is elevated. This is called the sail sign. A sail sign is an elevation of the anterior fat pad and, and it indicates that there is a joint effusion. This lateral radiograph of the elbow also nicely demonstrates a posterior fat pad sign. If you see slightly posterior to the uh, distal, radi distal humerus, there is an area of decreased density, which is fat. Please remember that fat is less dense than the subjacent musculature, and it appears darker on radiographs. So the area of linear uh, decreased density along the posterior margin of the distal humerus is called the posterior fat pad sign, and that indicates that there's a joint effusion. So this radiograph demonstrates a joint effusion with both the anterior fat pad sign, also known as the sail sign, as well as the posterior fat pad sign. Here is a cone down radiograph, which uh, better depicts the anterior fat pad sign or sail sign. The three white arrows show the anterior fat pad and how it is elevated and hopefully you guys now appreciate why it uh, got its term as the sail sign. Again this is an acute uh, elbow effusion and in the setting of trauma this uh, patient should be treated as a presumed occult fracture. Now let's look at our next radiograph. Here, the right arrows nicely demonstrate an area of minimal cortical impaction. The, second, uh, the, the small arrowheads show small cortical area of impaction from an acute fracture, and the larger arrows show areas of cortical discontinuity. So this, too, is an acute fracture of the radial neck. Now let's stop briefly and uh, uh, talk about how many uh, fractures of the radial head and neck are occult versus uh, uh, visible on radiographs. Around 85% of fractures of the radial head and neck are visible, as this one is on a radiograph, and we still have approximately 10 to 15% of radial head and neck fractures that are occult. As we've discussed previously, we can either, uh, if there's high clinical suspicion for an occult fracture, we can follow up in, uh, with radiographic imaging in 10 to 14 days. Or if uh, the patient does not want to be immobilized, uh, for 10 to 14 days with follow-up imaging, we can go on to MR imaging. So the sensitivity uh, for MR imaging is very high for the detection of acute fractures. Uh, the fracture line is visible much earlier than on some radiographs. The downside of MR imaging is that it is, it, it is a very expensive test. We can also go on to a bone scan. This is uncommon, but it does have high sensitivity but low specificity. In the emergency room setting, we can use a CT scan that can sometimes identify occult fractures. Uh, the advantage of CT over MRI is that it is a less expensive and quicker to obtain. However, it is much less sensitive for the detection of acute fractures. So here is an additional radiograph showing an acute fracture of the radial neck. And we can see a little bit of area of a cortical uh, step off along the lateral margin of the radial neck. So this is an acute fracture of the radial neck. 
Usually these fractures are treated conservatively with casting and splinting with early immobilization. They rarely uh, require surgery unless there is um, significant displacement and angulation, which should always be reported in a radiology report. Here is a coronal MR fluid sensitive uh, image of the uh, elbow that demonstrates bone marrow edema with the radial head and neck and we also see a non-displaced fracture of the radial neck. If, you, if we look closely, there are some mild sclerotic margins to the fracture as noted by the black line that outlines the fracture. So this again brings us to a short discussion about healing of fractures. There's uh, radiographic union or healing of a fracture and there's clinical union. Clinical union is when there's sufficient bone growth across uh, uh, the fracture with, uh, that's, um, to restore original function of the fracture. Radiographic union is when there's ossific bridging across the fracture line uniting the fracture fragments and this must be seen on three to four uh, cortices of the fracture and uh, you must have both an AP and lateral radiograph to determine this. Now radiographic union again just based on if we see obliteration of the fracture line and ossific callus bridging the fracture uh, legs usually behind clinical union. Again, union is uh, uh, depends on an expected time frame in order to, to define union versus non-union or delayed union. Expected time frame of a fracture is dependent on the patient's age and the bone involved. Our last image here depicts a non-healed or non-union fracture if we've uh, waited for the appropriate amount of time of the radial head and I'm excuse me the radial neck. Obviously this is not uh, what we want to see on our follow-up radiographs. There is no evidence of primary bone uh, healing. There's no bridging of the uh, fracture fragments on this uh, radiograph. We can also uh, have pseudoarthrosis which goes uh, which um, is a false joint that develops in the setting of non-union uh, and this precludes any further uh, healing of the fracture. Let's take a step back and we have uh, and talk about uh, occult fractures one more time. In many of our previous lectures, as well as this lecture, we discussed an occult fracture. I do want to remind you that, uh, that so far we have discussed traumatic fractures. We also have fatigue fractures and insufficiency fractures. A fatigue fracture is a fracture due to repetitive mechanical stress on healthy bone. Up to 80 to 85 percent of fatigue fractures are occult on on radiographs. Thus, we a lot of times need to identify fatigue fractures uh, by MR imaging. An insufficiency fracture is normal stress on weakened bone. And again, a lot of times these are occult. So please remember that if uh, you're worried about a fatigue fracture, if there's a lot of repetitive uh, mechanical stress, such as in a marathon runner or, or someone that has a lot of repetitive stress, that these fractures are commonly occult on radiographs and should be diagnosed by MR imaging. Hopefully you've enjoyed your mini lecture today on radial head and neck fractures as we have reviewed some of the findings and ways to diagnose occult fractures by looking for an elbow effusion and possibly the anterior sale sign or posterior fat pad sign. We also reviewed fracture healing and we discussed briefly fatigue fractures and insufficiency fractures. Have a great day.